Um, to biometric security, uh, there's, option, uh, there's an option with most uh, new laptops. They actually bring biometrics before TPF, TPM, which I don't understand that. Um, before Windows Vista and Windows XP, you had to use whatever software came, like so the HP, for instance, one of our security guys. Uh, we had these HP biometric security on our laptops, and since it is software at the end, they were just swiping their finger, swiping, 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 denial of service, you're in the operating system. So Microsoft came out with biometric security. It's tied to the operating system. It looks to be secure, a little more secure than uh, OEM software. And you can use it to log in at the local level or at the domain level. So this is a little bit of added security they have added. And Internet Explorer 8. Does their biometric uh, solution also um, extend out to the application level, like, like UPEC, third party, stuff like that? Yeah. It, you configure, it depends. On, under the control panel, if you compare, uh, do it with the operating system, it will work only for logging in. If you want it to, you say, for stored passwords and whatnot, mm -hmm. you'll probably have to add another application for that. I haven't been able to do that yet. Uh -huh. And, right, storing passwords, some like it, some don't, especially like on browsers. Someone, you know, it's stored somewhere. Hopefully it uses good encryption, whatever third party you use. But yeah, if you have biometrics on your machine, you'll be able to install third party software. You can actually use different fingers for different passwords. You can do all 10 fingers, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can, all 10. And it actually tells you, you select which one you want to swipe. So. You have to tell which finger you're swiping or yeah. what order back you You have to tell which finger you're swiping. They give you a diagram of this. I should put that diagram instead. It would have been cool. They give you ten fingers and you choose which one. So Internet Explorer 8. How many are using IE 8? How many people use Internet Explorer? At all? A few of you? Okay. I know you don't have a choice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Internet Explorer 8. Um, it can be used on XP and Vista. You can upgrade to them right now if you want. It is better than IE6. Is anyone using IE6 yet still? Please don't do that. Like, upgrade to 7 or 8. Like, again, 8 years old. So it has smart screen. That is, the phishing filter is now called smart screen. I'll show you a, a little demo on that one in a second. Basically, everyone knows what phishing site is, right? A site that says, oh, we're Bank of America, log in, and it's clearly not Bank of America. Um, it has a cross-site scripting filter, which I haven't seen work yet, but I have seen a screenshot and it looks cool. A lot of these sites, and as you see, more, more people are going to attacking web apps. The sites are vulnerable to cross-site scripting, and this is one of the biggest vulnerabilities. So IEA actually detects a site that is going to try to use cross-site scripting. So for example, if you log into Twitter.com, you put in Remember Me, and then you go to another site that uses cross-site scripting, Microsoft won't let it use it. Microsoft Internet Explorer won't let you, it will disable that code in the, in the page. So th this is the one that would attack most, yeah. most end users. And it has data execution prevention, which was built in, I think it came out on Windows XP, and it's cool. Um, it basically protects you from malware being ran from the IE uh, Explorer process. And also every tab that you open has tab browsing like Windows 7 did, but uh, like in like, Windows Vista and IE 7 did. And each tab runs its own process, which is a lot more secure than it was before. So, who's heard of the acid test? No? A few of you? Okay. There's a standard, web standards. I know Microsoft does not like that word standard, but uh, this basically tests it for a few things HTML and whatnot. On the left, we have an Internet Explorer 8 page running the ACID 3 test. It passed 20 out of 100. On the right, Internet, uh, Firefox got to 93 out of 100. As you can see, those should be colored boxes. Didn't do so well in that, but Microsoft usually does not follow standards at all anyway. And this is another screenshot of all, everything that failed in IE8 in their ACID test. Another thing, the smart screen filter. On the left, we have IE. As you can tell, it highlights on the top. I don't see if you can see it. It's a 72.46 address. It does highlight the address that you're going to, and everything else is more boxed out. But clearly, it's not Postal Italian's website. Firefox did catch it. This one took you right to it. So I don't know if it's because it's an Italian site or whatnot, but 
you know, be careful for, it's not going to stop everything, so be careful for fishing sites. There is something that I ate one in. A recent uh, study, actually two, three days ago, saw that IE8 has the best battery life. So if you're on a plane and you have the choice of web browsers, IE8 will last a few more minutes than uh, Firefox and Chrome. So XP mode. Who's heard of XP mode? No? Yeah? One? Okay. So XP without a doubt, and as Vista clearly saw, remains the standard for applications. You have an application, most likely it'll work for XP, might not work for Vista, might not work for Setup. So they come out with XP mode. It's not on by default, you have to install it. It uses virtual PC. You guys have used virtualization technology, VMware, VirtualBox, any of those. So it's a virtual instance of XP running in your system. And what it does is, you install whatever application you want and, my, and Windows 7 actually detects that you want to run the application on XP. So it adds it to a start menu. Your users or yourself will go to start menu, open this application, and it'll actually be running on an XP virtual machine. But you won't see the virtual machine pop up, you'll only see that window. This is awesome if you have older applications that you have to run, you can deploy XP mode. So it makes it easy and compatible. This can be done, you could create one virtual machine, uh, one XP mode machine, and deploy it to your entire organization. And an issue with XP mode is that this is a Windows XP machine running within your host. That means you need to keep that one secure as well. If you have one machine, your Windows 7 machine is completely secure, but the XP one is not, you're still vulnerable. So that's something that if you're doing a corporation, you can run it through your SMS or whatever, treat it as its own operating system and hopefully keep it secure because you only as secure as your weakest link. So 2008 R2 is coming out and they're pushing for you to upgrade when you go to 7 and go to this because you know they want more money. Just kidding. <laughs> Microsoft doesn't want your money. Uh, so there are a lot of features that integrate with Windows 7 a lot better. One of that is AppLocker. This was introduced back in XP, but no one ever used it. It's application whitelisting. So say you have a user that needs to have admin privileges for God knows what reason. No one needs admin privileges, but anyway. <laughs> they need admin, so you can give them admin and then run AppLocker through Google Policy and they won't be able to run any application unless we whitelist it. Or, in reverse, you can blacklist. Say, you know, don't run these programs. The best idea would be to whitelist and just say, run these company approved programs and that's it. They have admin, but they can't install, you know, whatever people are installing nowadays that messes up your, your corporate network. <laughs> There's another uh, feature called branch catch. This, you have satellite uh, offices or other branches. Basically, you spend a lot of money, those downloading stuff from your, through the WAN or through your VPN from corporate headquarters or from wherever your data center is. So you have a 2008 server on the border, on the edge, and it'll catch all the files. So really, if 10 people need, need to get download one file from some corporate server, it'll download it once through your internet connection, and then everyone else just gets it from the server internally. Pretty cool stuff. Might help your bandwidth overhead. And lastly, direct access. Now this one's real cool, I played with it a little bit. Basically it eliminates a need for VPN. All your mobile workers can use this to, I don't know how it works yet, I'm figuring it out. To be connected to, it's not through VPN though. To be connected, I know it uses SSL, it can use IP version 6 and it could use IPsec. And basically you're on the internet and everything's going through your, through your work. And so that's a few things that will make Windows 7 uh, a little better and have a few features that you can only use with 2008. Um.